Well, let's go ahead and get started. Liz, were you with us for the first session? I don't remember. No, but I okay. saw on the thing that you didn't have to have read the book to- You do not have to have read the book. Okay, so <laughs> I will just say, listen, I suppose, and pipe up if there's something I can contribute. Okay, well, let me kind of explain um, what we've done and where we're, where we're going with this. So the book was The Faith Club, which I, I know it's backwards because I haven't figured out the trick to fix that yet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it comes but, across to me okay yeah so it's um by Rania it'll be Suzanne Oliver and Priscilla Warner and so um, Liz are you familiar with the book at all no okay um honestly so, I'm just interested in the organization and so oh, okay. I'm kind of starting to like become a little more involved slowly okay. I guess and I saw these webinars and I was just sort of picking what sounded interesting okay Cool. Well, maybe we can we can talk about the book just a little bit, and then we can talk more about the organization. Because yeah. I'm the vice chairperson, and Jordan used to be the executive director, so oh. we could probably answer any questions you have. Cool. Yeah, right. that that sounds like a good format. Maybe <laughs> maybe you can like talk about the book a little bit, and that'll introduce yeah some themes about you know interfaith dialogue and work, right. and then it'll kind of naturally go into we can just kind of turn it and do a short conversation, just chatting. Yep. We can adapt. <laughs> Cheers. All right. So um, this book is, is really interesting and we picked it because it's, um, I read it actually a long time ago, the first time. It's the story of um, a Muslim, a Christian and a Jew, three, three women in New York uh, shortly after 9-11. And they wanted to write a children's book to show what their different religions have in common, like some of the same stories and things like that, because they're noticing, obviously, at that period in time that a lot of people are, there are a lot of prejudices and, you know, feeling uncomfortable in different ways. And um, so that's the premise of the book. And then what's really interesting is, at least to me, I mean, and Jordan, you can, you can jump in if something else struck you, but what was really interesting to me was how much each of them learned about their own set of beliefs, you know, through, through having these conversations together about, and, you know, and how much they found out they had in common and, and like things like that. What did you think, Jordan, what stood out? No, that's, that's exactly it. I mean, it, that had, that was actually really reinforced something that I had experienced myself in being, you know, folks ask, especially, so I'm in the Episcopal Church, I'm clergy in the Episcopal Church, and folks ask me, well, why are you so interested in interfaith stuff? Why don't you just, I don't know, they don't say it like that, but they're kind of, right. it kind of comes down to like, why don't you stick around your own kind? <laughs> <laughs> Generally, it's nicer than that, and it's more just curious. Um, but the answer that I usually give um is like, I have learned more about myself and uh, understanding and deepening in my own faith when I've been in relationship with people of other faiths, not because I've realized how wrong they are <laughs> <laughs> and about like, wow, that's great. I just am so superior, but it is just illuminate. Like, for example, I lived in the Middle East for two years uh, with with Muslims, dominant Muslim culture. And I learned so much more about the practice of prayer and hospitality and, and family um, from that group, from that religion, from that religious perspective. Not to say we don't have those things within Christianity, but it's some sort, sometimes it's seeing it from a different angle and seeing it from a different perspective um, and that's something they bring up a little bit in the book is, is kind of helps illuminate that within myself and within yeah. my own faith. So Liz, what's your faith background? So I was raised Catholic, um, stopped taking communion when I was 14 because I realized I didn't believe enough and wouldn't be honest to continue. Um, and then I happened to go to a boarding school that one of the requirements was religion class, not, it was a non, non-denominational like secular school um but the idea was to be educated about religion because it's part of the world sure. um and i 
got, there was a Old Testament, New Testament, world religions were the options. Um, so I took world religions because I thought, well, if I'm not Catholic, you know, maybe I'll find something else. Um, and kind of from that um, was turned off organized religion as a whole, um, because a lot of the problems were not unique to Catholicism or Christianity, like things I objected to. Right. Um, and kind of was kind of non, you know, I don't, I could have object or have objected modifying maybe the idea of labeling beliefs um because i kind of was feeling that was a big part of the problem but mm -hmm. being very eclectic eclectic you know drawing some from catholic heritage um some humanism um bits and pieces here and there from you know ideas that sounded you know interesting and resonated um and actually recently i've become a druid um so now it's kind of where i'm at um i'm currently taking a um the a correspondence course um, through a, a Druid order in, in England um, and kind of becoming part of that community. Um, so I don't uh, know, are you familiar, too familiar with Druidry, modern Druidry? A or... little bit, not okay. a lot. <laughs> Just so a it's, an, it's a nature, yeah. it's um, inspired by the ancient Druids. Um, the Druid revival kind of started about 300 years, kind of corresponds to the Celtic revival mm -hmm. um they're very closely connected um so modern druidry is a nature-based spiritual tradition um with focuses on storytelling healing and peace nice and um there are many druid orders all around the world all slightly different focuses interests um mm -hmm. they form and they split and they some of them die out and it's a very varied bunch um, and many are, um, kind of combine that path with others. Um, so there are Wiccan Druids, there are Pagan Druids, there are Buddhist Druids, there are Christian Druids, um, and just about anything, um, you, you can imagine non-dogmatic so people can kind of take, draw inspiration and do what feels right to them, connect with whoever, um, join an order or not join an order. Um, I probably am the only one through it around here, although I could be wrong about that. Um, so I mostly do solitary. Um, there is a grove, which is kind of what Druids groups are called, um, that's somewhat active down in Fort Collins. So I think that's the closest, but mostly I do work on my own. Um, and kind of based on all that kind of background, I think you can kind of see where the interest in interfaith will come from. Um, right. So I thought uh, I did attend the um, ten-year anniversary of 9/11 in Cheyenne, which I think was I don't know if it was Wyoming Interfaith or a local group, mm -hmm. um, but I, I kind of liked what I saw there, and so I kind of got to thinking once I got settled here um, that might be something uh, valuable to be a part of. Right. So. Well, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah, and welcome. Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. You too. And just to to kind of fill in, I'm a, I'm a Baha'i. Okay. So I don't know if you know anything about that. I know a little bit. Um, I feel like I read read about it, but I probably couldn't say exactly what it was. Um, I know sure. Ray Wilson is Baha'i. Yes. Um, yeah. So that was, I think, kind of what I first heard of it. Mm -hmm. Have you read his new book? No, but it sounds it's interesting. So good. You got to cool. read it. You'll mm -hmm. like it. Definitely. <laughs> um, so the Baha'i faith in a nutshell is, is essentially about unity. And so, um, you know, Baha'is, Baha'is believe that all religions are from the same God and that there are dif different versions of the same message. So interfaith comes very naturally to me because oh. <laughs> that's just, you know, that's, it, it fits right in with my whole belief system so very cool very briefly that's where we're at <laughs> so um the first session of the book we did some of the discussion questions and then what we were going to talk about tonight was um faith in action so the assignment was to do something interfaith 
to do something with somebody of another faith, whether that be to have coffee or share prayers or attend a service. Um, so I guess maybe we could just take a couple of minutes, maybe five minutes and talk about what experiences you guys have had interfaith in the last month or so. Hmm. Just in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll talk about, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about kind of a, a, not, not one specific experience, but a grouping of experiences that I had. Um, so I'm on the board of Laramie Pride Fest. Mm -hmm. And so we organize, um, we, I don't know why we do th this many events, but we did something like 18 events over the course of nine days for the wow. queer community in Laramie. And so uh, I mean, that ranges everything from big, like all a day event in the park to like knitting events and storytelling events and a bar crawl and karaoke and trivia and all of this sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, I was kind of nervous for this week a bit coming into the space as an ordained clergy person, especially, I mean, I've been on the board, so the board knows me and the board trusts me, obviously. Um, but the wider community doesn't, at least the, the LGBTQ plus community doesn't. And so, you know, I was at all the events, uh, not all of them, most of the events. Um, and I was an integral part of it. And so naturally folks come up to you and they want to get to know you and just being like, hey, thanks for putting this on. What do you do? And I always kind of stop for a sec and take it, <laughs> even if it's just internally, I take a deep breath and be like, oh, well, I'm I'm a priest in the Episcopal Church. And um, most people are uh, kind of taken aback by that. So my, my interfaith interactions this week, I want to say, are with folks that are mostly... Uh, many were atheist because immediately, you know, that's what you say. That's what happens when, when you say that you're, you know, a priest. And I'm sure Katrina, you get this, even just with you being Baha'i pe people just immediately start telling you, Oh, well, here's my religious affiliation. And here's exactly what I think of it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and here's what I think of, you know, Christianity. Um, and so I had a bunch of those interactions this week and they were almost all were overwhelmingly positive and people just curious and, um, you know, I, I did, I wasn't trying to convert anybody and nobody was trying to convert me. It was just sort of like a curious interaction between right. each other. And, and it, I guess one thing that I could take away from it is just, um, it was a reminder for me to stay, um, to stay bold, to stay, um, that's maybe not the right word, to stay confident yeah. and just in, in myself and, um, is people will always, people will always surprise you and, um, and, and people just, people are just people. <laughs> and um no matter what experiences that they've had in the past um generally they're in my experiences last week folks were willing to kind of open up and wanted somebody to hear them out so yeah that was kind of rambling but that was uh my yeah I hear what you're saying usually people react better than you expect them to and when, yeah. when we're nervous about it which is you know, natural, but when we're nervous about it, then sometimes we might shut off conversations that could otherwise be positive. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. How about you, Liz? Do you have any opportunities for interfaith interaction? Um, not to date. Um, I'm kind of not sure how safe it is to be out, per se. I'm kind of trying to feeling that out. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, it's it's probably not is probably more okay than I think it is. Although it's mostly the past couple of years that kind of made me 
back off with that feeling like it would be okay. Um, but so I don't know. I'm trying to try to decide. You guys are the first Wyomingites I really talked to about you know being a druid and mm-hmm. spirituality and background. Um, I have family um, sort of in this area, um, largely Catholic, although I think some people aren't and it's not really talked about. And um, you know, I've been around about ten years, and one of my cousins finally realized I wasn't Catholic like that I'd stopped being Catholic or was never Catholic or whatever and rocked it really strongly. Like I shot her puppy or something. And like, wow. okay, like I don't pray. I don't say grace. I, you know, try to be respectful or at least I go to church when you guys ask me to, because, you know, like family's always really like that. And I don't mind doing that. Um, and uh, very sensitive. So I'm like, okay. Um, so still filling it out. Um, you know, I'd like to get to a point of, um, you know, being out and open and uh, mm-hmm. just trying to figure out the best way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people that I've talked to have experienced um, rejection in one form or another, mm-hmm. you know, particularly in maybe in younger years. And, um, you know, it's, it makes it hard to, you know, put yourself out there again and, you know, say, Hey, I'm doing something different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I'm a a doctor and had finished residency in 16. Um, my med school is back East and I did residency out here. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why I said, I was like kind of in and around, um, and been drawn to live here since I was a kid. So that's kind of long-term plan. Um, very much had the feeling of why maybe a live and let live kind of, Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the conservative areas back east, like where I did med school, um, was very much like talking, everyone talking about Jesus all the time, um, Baptist country. Mm-hmm. Um, but more live and let live, I don't bother me, he don't bother you, was kind of the impression I got in Wyoming. Um, but these past couple of years, I'm not entirely so sure anymore. And maybe it'll die down, the tensions, or I don't know. Um, yeah. That's kind of what made me a little more hesitant um, to say, you know, talk about um, right. my spiritual identity and so forth. So yeah. I don't know. I, you all I, seem like a cool bunch. What you're saying, so. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you all seem like a cool bunch. And um, I thought, you know, I'd start um, connecting with you guys and maybe yeah. that would be a win. Yep. And then we have somebody joining us on the phone. Who's there? mystery caller okay maybe they just want to listen in phone caller if you want to join in the conversation jump in anytime (laughs) all right laramie number so we know (laughs) yes that 399 (laughs) well i can share i was i was going to share about um a, a group that i have called elevated conversations and I, Jordan has attended once or twice, but it's it's something that's been going on for um, a long, long time yeah. in one form or another. And what we do is um, it's twice a month and we have a group of people that get together just on Zoom. So it's kind of from all over the place. And uh, I put together a series of quotes from all different religions on whatever the topic is that week. And so we read through the quotes and... Um, Part of it's making sure we understand it. Part of it's just reflecting on it and, you know, deepening our thoughts. And, um, and it's, it's been really, really neat because every single time we do it, the same thing we find out is that everybody is saying the same thing in different words. So it's, it's been really a very positive and productive group going on for a long time now. Lama said something very similar. I can't hear you, Liz. You the, the, I think the Dalai Lama said something very similar um, to um, like exploring everyone else's faith kind of makes you deepens your own, something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And all those commonalities. Yep. 
so that's my my regular interfaith activity although there's a lot of one-offs last year we did right right about this time of year we did a community building conference that was based on you know interfaith ideas and how can we use the strengths of everybody's faith to build the community so that was good and obviously interfaith network Yeah, and this this group that puts this on is, I guess the, I don't know if this is a the transition you want to make. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Jordan. Trita. So the group that puts this on is called we call it the Spiritual Life Team of the Wyoming Interfaith Network. Um, and well, I, I I don't know why I'm bringing it up. Katrina should explain it. But we're always looking for more ways of of just like engaging and building interfaith community. Um, with the goal of with the goal of dialogue and community and relationship i think peace building is a result of that but that's not necessarily i don't mean to admit, i don't mean to spell why am i explaining this katrina you, <laughs> i don't know but you're doing a great job go for it jordan <laughs> i mean i do i like what i'm saying but then i keep being like yeah but katrina should explain it um <laughs> So, Jordan says that because I, I lead the spiritual life team, at least right. for the moment. <laughs> yeah. So um, the way that, I don't know how much you know about how Wyoming Interfaith Network is set up, Liz. Um, Not much. I sign up for the newsletter, so I get the okay. things every so often. That's um, kind of what I know. Um, and there's okay. also like, there's local groups, like isn't there a Laramie interfaith and then i know i've um studied residency in casper and there was an interfaith okay group up so, there that did um they sometimes had, like had some um ability to help support patients various mm -hmm. things prescriptions and stuff yeah i i guess that casper is similar the laramie interfaith group is different from the wyoming interfaith network mm -hmm. so the laramie interfaith group i can speak to is um is like food bank services kind of thing. It's a separate organization. So it's not it's not like a branch of this one. And I would assume the same for Casper. Okay. Um, but the way that the way that the Wyoming Interfaith Network is set up is it's statewide. So we do a lot of things um, online. We do some things in person. Um, and as it stands right now, we have basically three teams, which is the spiritual life team, the um, peace and justice team and the on sacred ground team. So, and then we have the leadership program. So the, the spiritual life team, um, which obviously I know the most about is, is um, as, as Jordan said, it's about building community. It's about education opportunities. You know, how can we connect basically building bridges? Um, then um, peace and justice uh, has really struggled for the last <laughs> little while here. So they don't have a lot going on right now, but um, traditionally what they did is is like justice issues. And then um, on sacred ground has has done quite a bit in the last few months um, related to water. So they're like, um, you know, dealing with earth and water and, you know, all those natural resources and a spiritual perspective on that and then we have the leadership program which has really had done great things um there this is the second year of the leadership program and they take um so the participants in the leadership program sign up and then once a month for the better part of the year like nine months um they meet in a different city in wyoming and they learn about, um, you know, sort of the, the community resources there, social justice issues, and also about different faiths, you know, people who might be living in that area. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the way things are set up right now. Cool. Is there anything else you would add to that, Jordan? No, I think that you covered it well. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't want to see. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I need to add anything. It's a it's a great group. So we grew out the tiniest bit of history. They grew out. It used to be the Wyoming Association of Churches, 
is the same organization. And then about 2017 or so, uh, the board voted to become the Wyoming Interfaith Network um, to get out of just being a, a Christian-centered organization to being interfaith. Um, and that's been both, I think, a blessing and a challenge in some ways. Um, challenge because it's it's hard to express that identity as an interfaith organization in Wyoming and to find supporters and all of that stuff. But it's been a blessing in that I think it's, I think if we were really gonna live into the values that we had set as an organization, I think becoming interfaith was just a natural step right. um, to that. And, and it's been a blessing having, you know, we, we've done our best to have as a diverse board of directors as, as possible in the last few years. And um, yeah, so who knows what holds the next several months. I can tell you that our most successful events in, in, rec in the recent past have been um, events about engaging interfaith community in dialogue in education and conversation. And so um, I can't speak for our board or our director, but I could see I could see us doing a lot more of that in the future as well. Because that's yeah. still sort of newish. I, I bring that up because that's still sort of new-ish to us as an interfaith organization. So we're always exploring new ways of creating and engaging community and dialogue and especially across vast distances in Wyoming. Right. So we're always looking to, you know, increase the diversity, you know, to have more, more voices. So, you know, as a Druid, you're, you're, that's exciting. <laughs> Fantastic. More than welcome. Thank you. I feel very welcome. Good. That's great. Do you have any questions we could answer for you, Liz? Um, not that I can think of right now. Okay. Cool. And you know how to con make contact if you need to? Mm -hmm. Want to? Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, that's kind of all I have for tonight with, with you know, <laughs> the group cool. that we, we've got. <laughs> yeah. I guess it worked out in my favor. <laughs> hey yeah no I mean it was it was it was good to meet you and good to talk about some of this stuff so yeah definitely so we'll we'll go ahead and wrap it up for tonight if nobody has anything else they want to add and um Liz I hope we see you again soon Jordan I'm sure I'll see you since I'm parking behind your house every day <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. yeah Liz don't be a stranger and, and reach out um Anne Marie is our executive director and I am sure you can find Katrina's info as well just yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah really encourage you if you want to get involved at all or just know what more events are coming up just feel free to reach out whatever you yeah. feel comfortable with i think you know, there definitely will be a time hopefully not too far down the road of really taking more of an active um wanting to be more of an active role um in the meantime i just kind of been when i get the little emails and i see what's what's offered and um mm -hmm. these uh zoom calls and so forth i right. have been pretty neat yeah i guess I could, I could talk real quickly about the upcoming book clubs we've got okay yeah, what do you um, get? so we have the next one is this book profiles in courage oh, okay. it's by uh one of our board members roger mcdaniel okay um it's a pretty cool book because it talks about it's all these um mostly historical stories about people who um stood up for what they believed in wyoming so that's a pretty cool book. And then we'll have another one in the fall. And actually, I don't have the name of that in front of me. I forget it too. I should, but. Yeah. Anyway, there'll be another one in the fall that we don't have a lot of details on yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go ahead and wrap it up with that. Great. Well, thank you. All right. Sure. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Well, good to meet you, Liz. Very nice yep. meeting you guys.
Nice See you, Katrina. Too. We'll see you later, guys.